Hello everyone and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about demystifying your light, uh, Luminar AI catalog. So at its heart, a catalog is a database and we're going to dive into what makes that unique, how to use it, how to protect your images, and a lot of little questions that people have, especially when they're getting started with cataloging their photos. I'm going to do my best to answer those questions today. I want to take a moment and say hello to Julie, Josh, JGmail28. Robert, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Let me go ahead and jump over to Luminar, share my screen, and you guys should be seeing Luminar up on the screen. Now, I've started out, I'm here in the catalog, and you can see that I have several folders that I've added to my Luminar library. These are all different folders full of different images that I have for my work with Skylum Software. And right now, I'm in a commercial shoot that was taken at Caboose Commons by one of our educators, Nicole Young, fabulous food photographer. And so we're gonna take a look at what's going on in the catalog and where your images are and what, Im what information is stored in that catalog. So first and foremost, a catalog is a database. Well, what does that mean? It's a record that points to your photos and contains specific bits of information about those photos. The catalog does not actually hold the images themselves. It merely points to them on your hard drive. So the database holds where your image is located, and it also holds your instructions for editing. It holds a few other little details, like if you marked it as a pick or a reject, if you put it in an album and so forth, but the main information is where it's located and what you edited with it. So when you bring images into Luminar AI, Luminar AI does not actually hold your photos. It simply points to them. That's why it's so important when you back up your computer, not only do you back up your Luminar catalog because that has your editing instructions, that you also back up those folders where your images are kept, whether that's on your internal hard drive, on an external, or even on a network storage device, cloud storage, and whatnot. You wanna make sure those images are protected because that's, those are the originals. And Luminar AI does not actually touch or change your originals, it merely points to them. So all, any changes you make inside of our software are just um, details in a database that are the, the list of changes that you wanna make. Those changes are not actually applied until you export a photo. So when you come into a program and you make some changes, let's say, let's go ahead and choose this image that I edited here. That looks just so tasty. It makes my mouth water just looking at it. Nicole is such a fabulous photographer. So if I go here into my edit tab and I take a look in my history, you can see that I added a handful of different um, adjustments. I tried several different templates and then I adjusted the exposure. All of those changes are listed here in my catalog. Now, if I wanna have this image as it looks on the screen right now and I wanna take that, I wanna share it on social media, I wanna send it to a client, some other end use, what I have to do is then go over to export and save it to my disk. And when I go to save to disk, this is where those changes then become embedded in a new image file that you can then share, save, or even open up in other applications if you want to. So the cool thing about this is it creates a brand new file and your raw file is preserved. So I can go ahead and export this with my changes. I can save it as a JPEG. That's what's pretty typical for you know, most uses, whether you're gonna share it on social media, send it to a print lab, send it to a client, whatever is, is needing to be done. But if here on my computer is the raw file, so I can right click on this image and say show in Finder. On Windows, that'd be show in Explorer. And that's gonna bring up where that raw image, completely unedited, is located on my hard drive. There we go, it popped up on a different screen. So there it is down at the bottom, that is exactly the raw file. No changes have been made to that, completely unedited. So the beauty of this is our edits are completely non-destructive. Your raw file is always protected and unchanged and you can always revert back to that original if you don't like your edits. So I hope that clarifies a little bit of what a catalog does and how it works. Let me go ahead and take a look here in our comments and see if there's any questions. All right, let's see here. Hello, Pat, Gary, Kai, Randy, Gabrielle, so glad you guys are all able to be here today. If you have any questions on how the catalog works, please pop those into the chat or into the comments if you're watching this after the fact. I always go back and read those comments and questions and do my best to answer them. So the goal today is to kind of clarify that Luminar stores a list of the edits made to your image. It points to your image, 
but it doesn't actually hold your images. So that's the big thing you have to understand when you're getting into photo editing and cataloging your images. Those images are stored wherever you originally put them on your hard drive. So when I go up here to the top, to the plus, and I add a folder, it's only pointing to that folder. It's not actually bringing those images in to Luminar AI. So I hope that helps. Robert's asking if there's a rating system. In Luminar AI, there is not. What we have is the ability to pick favorites and reject. So let me go ahead and click on this image here. You see down at the bottom, I have an X for Mark is rejected and a heart for Mark is a favorite. I can then filter my catalog by those images and find my favorites and rejects and cull my images in that respect. All right, hello, Catherine. So glad you're able to join us today. All right, any other questions about catalogs? This is a pretty concise episode today, and I just wanted to make sure we're answering those questions that help you understand what the catalog does. We're not really gonna get into any nitty gritty edits today. We'll save that for another day. Uh, see, Richard says the relationship between Luminar AI catalog and other catalogs such as Lightroom Classic. So one of the big differences between the Luminar AI catalog and a Lightroom catalog, um, they're very similar in a lot of respects. But in Lightroom, you have to actually tell it. So if you put a new image into a folder that you've already brought into Lightroom, you have to manually click on that folder and tell it to sync. In Luminar AI, if you take a folder, you add another image, five images, 10 images, that folder, next time you launch Luminar AI, those images will appear in your catalog. So it automatically updates. Lightroom does not. So there's just a couple of different ways that they work, but virtually they're, they're very similar in that they both they hold on to your metadata, they, sh they point to wherever your image is actually located, and they hold all of your edits. So hopefully that answers your question there, Richard. Um, Jerry says, what are lost edits? So what that's what happens, let me go ahead and click up into that, and you'll see that I've got a little exclamation point here at the corner of my image. What that means is that I either moved that image or the folder that the image was in while Luminar AI was closed. Now I can um, all the time. I can always delete these lost edits and that'll remove those lists of edits out of my catalog. But if I wanted to reconnect those to the original image and I happen to move it somewhere else, I can always right click on that image and say locate image and it will bring up my, my file folder system. And then I can find where I moved that image to and reconnect them. The same goes if it happens with a, with a folder. So there might be days you moved something while Luminar AI was closed, you moved a folder and then you end up with that exclamation point here on a folder. The same thing will happen, you'll be able to right click on it and choose locate folder to reconnect that folder to the database in Luminar AI. Let's see here, Julie asks, when do you change the name of your, your, when you change the name of your folder that the pictures are in? Do you open in Luminar or do you change the name of the folder when it is in Luminar? Um, so you can do either. If you want to change the location of a folder, you want to change the name of the folder, it's always best to do it while Luminar AI is running. If you're in Luminar AI and you want to change the name of a folder here, you can always right click on that folder and choose rename and rename it there. Now that does rename it on your hard drive as well. So that's directly connected. And again, it's pointing to where that folder is located. So you're just renaming that folder on your hard drive, but you can rename it here. You can rename it on your hard drive just make sure you have Luminar AI running while you do it, because if you don't, that's when you end up with these lost edits. So something to keep in mind. John says this makes good sense. I'm glad. I hope it's helpful to everybody. Let me know if there's any other questions. I'm happy to answer them. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up and wish you a wonderful afternoon. Vanelli and I will be with you tomorrow for our weekly wrap up. So if you think of anything else between now and then, make sure you jot those notes down. And let me know tomorrow and I'll do my best to follow up and answer any catalog questions that you might have. With that, have a wonderful afternoon and I will see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.